Welcome back to Wildcast, guys. Hope you're doing well out there. I'm your host, Wild, as always. And in this video, we're going to be doing an update to a video that I made last year regarding Mike Lindell losing $5 million to another Trump supporter who participated in one of his ridiculous uh, election fraud symposiums and disproved his own claims that specifically that China had hacked the election uh, to help Joe Biden. Uh, this guy, Robert Zeidman, who we talked about in my original video, uh, he disproved Mike Lindell's uh, claims, the data package that he was trying to use to prove his election denying claims. What's his name? Uh, Zeidman disproved them and he won $5 million according to the contract. And in the original video, which I'll link over here, they both agreed to going in front of an arbitration panel and the arbitration panel ruled that Zeidman had met the uh, conditions in the contract of the contest and therefore uh, uh, Mike Lindell has to hand over $5 million to uh, Zeidman, Robert Zeidman, who's this guy over here, uh, for winning the contest. Okay, But of course, Mike Lindell didn't want to pay, as always. Uh, he thought that he was going to win at the arbitration panel because uh, he was one footing the bill uh, for it completely, I think. I don't think Robert Zeidman paid any money, uh, but um, Mike Lindell and Zeidman both agreed to resolve their problems in the arbitration panel. Uh, now, the, the problem with going to arbitration panels is the uh, Federal Arbitration Act applies, and which well, that means that the only time that a, a district court judge, like the federal judge here in Minnesota, the only time that a judge may overturn the decision of an arbitration panel is if there is clear corruption or other kind of uh, misdeeds uh, on the side, uh, on the on the minds of the arbitration judges. And in this case, of course, there was none. There was a, uh, arguable evidence on the record for the judges to uh, for the arbitration judges to rule in favor of Zeidman. So the district court here couldn't do anything, even if they disagreed with the factual findings, which which the judge at one point said that he disagrees with a part uh, of the arguments of the arbitration panel. There's nothing he can do. So if you don't want if you don't want to abide by the arbitration panel's rules, then you should never go to an arbitration panel. You should go straight to court. But Mike Lindell and Zeidman both agreed to go to an arbitration panel, which is like a private way to resolve things. If you do that, then you have to abide by whatever decision they come up with. Except for corruption, clear and clear evidence of corruption on the side of the judges, there's no way the district court is going to overturn it. Knowing the law, I told you guys that he would lose at the arbitration panel and wherever he goes, he's going to lose. And he lost at the arbitration panel. He lost now at district court. And if he wants to go to appeals court uh, to the Eighth Circuit, he's going to lose there as well. Okay. So, Predicting right now, if he appeals this decision to the to the next federal court, he's going to lose there too. Okay, and then he only has a Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court is not going to take his case. So when he loses at the appeals courts, it's over. He will have to pay the five million. But this judge, judge, uh, the judge in this case has also ordered him to pay the five million to Robert Zeidman. Okay. So before we get to the decision of the judge, I want to show you guys real quick. Uh, so Law and Crime was reporting on this. This was in 2021. Uh, the challenge was called Prove Mike Wrong regarding the election uh, data that he was trying to prove was, uh, you know, proof of Chinese interference in the 2020 election. Uh, Robert Zeidman was able to prove at this South Dakota symposium that the data packets that he was trying to use to prove his claims didn't even come from the 2020 election, thereby disproving this idiot Mike Lindell's claims. Initially, the judges at the contest ruled against Zeidman, but Zeidman was confident that he can win, and that's why he uh, that's why he was willing to go in front of an arbitration panel. Okay, They could have gone straight to court, by the way. They could have just, you know, sued each other and gone to dis district court and let the judge settle it, the federal judge, but they didn't do that. They both agreed to go in front of an arbitration panel, which was paid for by uh, Mike Lindell, and the arbitration panel ruled that he has to pay $5 million, which was the outline, the contract that, that was uh, agreed to by both sides as a uh, part participating as the people participating uh, in this contest. Okay, so now let's go to the legal document. Uh, Robert Zeidman versus Lindell Management LLC. This is the company that's going to have to pay this judgment, the $5 million judgment, after he loses at the appeals courts. No doubt he's going to try to appeal this and uh, he's going to lose because he has no grounds. So here's the legal standard. <clears throat> and this is in federal court, by the way, in Minnesota. A court's review of an arbitration award is very limited, and that's according to the Eighth Circuit, which is the appropriate um, 
the uh, federal appeals court for Minnesota. So as you guys can see, uh, cases from Minnesota and the Dakotas and a whole bunch of other states here uh, go to the Eighth Circuit. This is the um, boundaries for the circuit courts. Those are appeals court. So in all of these states that are federal courts that are hearing cases, when somebody wants to appeal, they go up to the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals, and that is where the appeals are heard. After going to the appeals, the Eighth Circuit, then you can go to the Supreme Court. Those are the two levels of appeal you have. Once you lose both of those, you're finished. And this case is not going to the Supreme Court. Uh, this is going to be resolved at either this court. If Mike Lindell uh, decides to appeal, it will go up to the Eighth Circuit because this is coming from Minnesota. All, all federal cases from Minnesota go up to the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals, the federal appeals court for the Eighth Circuit, which Minnesota belongs to. Okay. Same thing with South Dakota, North Dakota. Their cases also go to um, the Eighth Circuit. So just some basic law there. But nevertheless, let's get back to this. So because of the fact that the Eighth Circuit is the appropriate appeals court for Minnesota, the judges using cases from Minnesota appeals court. These are this is a decision 1993 where where, which is where he's citing this from, a court's review of an arbitration award is very limited. When parties agree to arbitrate, a court cannot substitute a judicial determination for the arbitrator's decision, which means after the arbitration judges come up with a decision, the district court cannot change that. They have no remedy to address the factual findings. They have to abide by the factual findings unless the arbitrators are clearly corrupt, which they were not corrupt at all in this case. Courts may not review the merits merits of an arbitration award, even though the parties may allege that the award rests on er errors of fact or misinterpretation of the contract. That's further from uh, uh, from another case uh, in the Eighth Circuit, 2002. Even if the court is convinced that the arbitrator committed a serious factual or legal error, so long as the arbitrator is even arguably construing or applying the contract and acting within the scope of his authority, arbitration awards must be confirmed. Excuse me. <clears throat> The Federal Arbitration Act, which governs these uh, areas of law, provides limited grounds on which an arbitration award may be vacated. That's essentially what Mike Lindell was asking for, for the federal court to uh, void the decision of the arbitration judges, which is not going to happen. The FAA requires that an arbitration be upheld unless it is obtained by corruption, fraud, or undue means where there is evident uh, partiality or corruption in the arbitrators, where the where where there was a misconduct by the arbitrators or where the arbitrators exceeded their powers, and none of that happened here. Okay, that is also from another case, Hoffman, uh, 2001, Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals, which is the uh, appeals court right above this judge. So, uh, precedents. This is a parallel precedent, a binding precedent on this court. So the district court is over here, the appeals court is over here. Uh, any relevant, any on-point precedents from the Federal Appeals Court, the Eighth Circuit, the judge, the judges below that court has to obey it. That's how the law works, okay? The Supreme Court is the highest court, and their precedents apply to all courts, state and federal, and they have to abide by them. You can't go against Supreme Court precedent, and this court can't go against the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals precedents, which is what all of this is from, okay? He has to abide by the courts above him. He can't cross them. Basically, uh, there are three arguments that he presented. One was from language modification. Lindau tried to say that the language um, that was being used by the uh, panel was not appropriate. Uh, let's just go over it. The panel took its interpretation um, a step further by finding packet captured data was the only possible type of election data. The panel justified this finding with the fact that the data was captured from the internet and the only possible way to capture data live from the internet is through packets. Uh, the panel cited the to uh, the statement of Dr. Douglas Frank, one of Lindell's experts and a challenge judge uh, and statements by Lindell himself that claimed that data would be in packet form. And if it was not in packet form, it could not be election data. So this was a point of language regarding uh, what the uh, the standards that were used by the uh, arbitration panel. They they concluded that if, if they were not uh, data packs, then they could not be election data. And that, that was part of their ruling. This is some technical stuff that you don't need to worry too much about. But the point is, that was a reasonable conclusion uh, that, that, that could have been drawn. You could argue it. As the judge goes on to say, he may not agree with it, but he has to abide by it. Okay? So 
Here is, admittedly, the panel was tasked with the difficult job of interpreting a poorly written contract, but in evaluating the same information, the court finds it to be quite a leap that the only possible data that could constitute election data would be in packet capture data. Uh, however, the court's potential disagreement with the outcome is not the standard upon which to review the arbitration award. The court must only decide if the panel was arguably applying the contract. So even if the judge disagrees that packet capture data is the only way to capture election data, even if he disagrees with that conclusion, which was one of the conclusions drawn by the uh, arbitration panel, he can't overturn the, this, the decision based on that. Okay, A language disagreement or even a technical disagreement about the facts of the case are not grounds to overturn and vacate a decision by an arbitration panel. Okay, <clears throat> next, Lindell LLC, now they, next they tried to shift the burden. Uh, Lindell LLC argues that the panel's decision that Zeidman only uh, need insert doubt about the, uh, the data presented by Mike Lindell's side is not the same as proving the data is unequivocally not from the election, thus shifting the burden and modifying the contract. Lindell LLC's argument may be a compelling alternative interpretation, but the standard for reviewing an arbitration award does not weigh uh, competing interpretations. The court is not at liberty to review the outcome of an arbitration award simply because one party believes it to be incorrect. Retrial of the issues is not within the purview of the court. So again, once you go in front of an arbitration panel and the decision is made, both sides here agree to go in front of this panel. Okay. So you have to accept the outcome. If you don't want to do that, you should come straight to court without going to arbitration panels. And you can do that. You can sue each other or one party can sue the other. Like Zeidman can sue and sue in federal court. If Zeidman, for example, didn't want to go to an arbitration panel, he could have just straight up sued uh, Lindell in state court or in federal court. So... There you go. Okay, here's the conclusion. The court's responsibility in reviewing an arbitration award is not to reevaluate the merits, but rather ensure that the panel acted appropriately. Lindell's, Lindell LLC's only basis for court action was that the panel acted outside the scope of its authority in issuing the award. Even though the court may have reached a different outcome, given an independent initial review of the information, which cannot happen now because it's too late, the court fails to identify evidence that the panel exceeded its authority. Under the court's narrow review, it will confirm the arbitration award. And uh, he, the plaintiff's motion to confirm arbitration award is granted. Uh, Mike Lindell's motion to vacate the arbitration award is denied. And the plaintiff is awarded $5 million plus uh, post judgment interest beginning in April 19th, 2023 to be paid within 30 days. So uh, this is a judgment on the, uh, on the record. So technically this can be appealed up to the Minnesota appeals courts, eight, uh, eight circuit court of appeals, which I just showed you guys this court over here. So he can't technically appeal this. There will be no point because all the appeals court is going to do is just not, uh, uh, affirm the decision of the of the trial judge, of the district judge here, because the FAA is clear. OK, the law is already on the books. It's right here. It's not going to change just because you go to the appeals court. There are no valid grounds for appeal in this case. There was no reversible error by the judge or by, or by the arbitrators. The courts have no choice but to hold up what the arbitration panel decided because they were not corrupt. They made a fair decision and the courts have to uphold it. Even if they disagree with some parts of the uh, interpretations that were used by the arbitration panel, that is not grounds for getting rid of this judgment okay, by the arbitration panel. So uh, Mike Lindell is screwed and that's the bottom line. And Zeidman is going to get paid one way or another. And Mike Lindell does not have the money to, uh, to waste on anything. His companies are going broke. He himself will be broke very soon if, not, if he's not already because of all the lies that he decided to push and all the lawsuits and, and legal actions he has to, uh, to, uh, to face and to pay up on. And this is a self-inflicted wound, by the way. He's the one who uh, uh, organized this symposium. He's the one who put forth this uh, this ridiculous contest. This is a complete self-inflicted wound. I don't feel bad at all for these people. Okay, Mike Lindell and his ilk are the reason. Uh, Sidney Powell, Giuliani, all those people, Donald Trump, they're the reason, Kerry Lake, they're the reason that, uh, like, uh, more than 70% of the Republican Party doesn't accept election results anymore unless they win. Anytime they lose, they're like, oh, no, it's corruption. Uh, it's, it's fraud, right? That's their go-to move. If they win, there's no fraud. If they lose, it's fraud. This is what Kerry Lake and Donald Trump and uh, people like Mike Lindell have done to the Republican Party and for a significant part of the right-wing uh, voter base 
who used to be who, who always had some mental issues, but they have gone insane now because of the conspiracy theories spread by people like this. So they, those people have to take some personal responsibility. But I blame people like Mike Lindell for opening them up to this level of insanity by challenging everything, claiming that, you know, we only lost because China helped Joe Biden. They still have zero evidence to prove that. They've lost over 63 cases. This makes 64 since this is an election challenge case. It was about the lies that Mike Lindell spread. And this guy disproved the lies that he spread about China uh, changing votes in favor of Biden because, you know, Biden's a communist. Completely mentally deranged. And I don't feel bad for these people at all. They they have uh, so doubt in the hearts of uh, many Americans, millions of Americans to doubt our democracy. And if a civil war happens in this country, it'll be because of these people. Because when people don't accept democratic results of elections anymore, they feel like they have no power over the government and therefore they're not going to listen to the law or the government and the government becomes become something that's a foreign object that's intervening in their lives. And a lot of these people already have a lot of problems with the federal government. It's not that hard to imagine them rising up against it. So whenever a civil war does happen, you know who to blame. Okay, the people who are lying about the government to sow seeds of doubt in regular Americans and turning them against America. That's what Mike Lindell and Donald Trump are involved in and Carrie Lake and other people. And I don't have any sympathy for these people when their lives are destroyed by the lies that they tell. And the courts are the only thing holding them accountable for their lies. And that's why I support law and order in America. And our legal system does work, as once again demonstrated by this decision. And that's all I got to say for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you want to support my work, you can join channel memberships on YouTube or you can join uh, Patreon over here and talk to me directly there. And if you want to watch my last video, that'll be listed over here. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one, as always.